Welcome to Muscle World, I'm Max. In today's podcast, I'm going to be talking about my thoughts on lower limb training. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a former Royal Marine and the face behind the Muscle World YouTube channel. I've been training for just over two decades now, but that's probably a bit longer if you count all the running, climbing and bodyweight circuits I did back when I was preparing for the Marines. Over the years, I've explored a ton of different styles of training, bodybuilding, running, powerlifting, swimming, gym ring, g- gymnastic rings, hybrid training, quite a few different things. Now at 38, my focus has shifted a bit. I'm still chasing the bodybuilding aesthetic, uh, but these days I'm just as interested in being fit, athletic, and explosive. And that's why I've really started thinking about differently about my training, especially when it comes to the lower body. See, for years I trained my calves and lower legs the way most of us do. Calf raises, leg presses, maybe some seated variations to isolate the muscles. And yeah, those exercises can build strength and size, but I've come to believe they're not the most effective way to train the lower legs if your goal is athleticism, explosiveness, and real-world performance. So, just thinking about it, how do we actually use our calves and lower legs in day-to-day life? In sports, it's not by standing still and slowly raising up onto our toes. It's through jumping, sprinting, pushing off, bounding, all those dynamic explosive movements where the calves, ankles and feet work as a unit with the rest of the body. When you look at elite, elite athletes or even animals like cheetahs or deer, it's obvious. Their lower limbs are built for power, speed and efficiency because they're constantly being used in explosive functional ways. You won't see a cheetah doing seated calf raises before it chases its prey, just like you won't see an elite sprinter doing that exercise on the track. Their calves are developed from the act of sprinting itself, explosive high force movements that mimic how those muscles are designed to function. And this realization has completely changed how I approach lower limb training. For me, it's now less about isolation and more about integration. I'm talking about things like jumps, vertical jumps, broad jumps, bounding. All of these train the lower legs to produce and absorb force. Sprinting and hill work, nothing engages the calves and the lower legs like sprinting, especially uphill, where you're really driving forwards. Plyometrics, quick, powerful movements like box jumps or hops not only build explosive strength, but also improve tendon health and elasticity. Sled pushes, these are brilliant for building strength in the lower legs while integrating the entire posterior chain. What's interesting is that this isn't just about the muscles. It's about the tendons and connective tissues as well. Explosive movements like these train the tendons to store and release energy efficiently, which is key for athletic performance. The more I've shifted towards these functional, dynamic exercises, the more I've noticed improvements in not just my performance, but also how my body feels. My ankles are stronger, my feet are more stable, and my explosiveness has gone up. I sometimes wonder, what if I trained like this back in my 20s? Would I have been faster, stronger, more explosive? Probably. So for anyone listening who's just starting out, here's my takeaway. Don't just think about what muscles look good or what's easy to isolate in the gym. Think about how your body actually moves. The lower legs, especially, are designed for dynamic, explosive work and they'll respond best when you train them that way. Of course, this isn't scientific training advice. This is just my take. But if you're curious about how to improve your athleticism, explosiveness and aesthetics, it might be worth thinking beyond the usual calf raises and leg presses. Look at what works in nature, in athletes, and in everyday life, and see if you can bring some of those principles into your own training. That's all for today's episode. I hope this gave you something to think about. Thanks for listening. Keep pushing forward.